everyone, in this video I'm going to show you beginning to end how to do an argyle scarf using your 1 4th gauge 15 inch narrow scarf loom with 120 pegs from Cindy Wood Looms. Now to do this, I'm using five different collars. The yarn that I am using is from Big Bad Wool. It's P. Weepica. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. I've already caked all the collars, but they did come in a hank similar to this when I got them. Uh, so you will either want to ball them or you'll have to either ball or spool them up when you get them. Now this yarn is so incredibly soft. It is 50% fine washable merino and 50% baby alpaca. And it's 175 yards, which is 50 grams each. Uh, there's the website and everything. If BB wools, of course, there'll be direct links in the video in the video description below. Now the yarn itself, it doesn't say um, the weight of the yarn, but I did use my wraps per inch tool, and I was getting 12 wraps per inch, which puts it at a number three, a DK weight yarn, which is a, considered a light. You can use a DK weight or a light worsted weight yarn uh, to do this project. I'll put that over to the side. Now the collars I have, I have leaf. This one is girly girl. This one is minty. Um, tree frog and night owl tools that you will need I do suggest a row counter a tapestry needle your loom tool a crochet hook a piece of yarn um, you do a collar opposite of what you're using so you'll be able to see it this is for your cast on and you'll need a chart. Now you can just go on Google and look up Argyle charts and print out one that's similar. This one I've got some mistakes that I fixed. Uh, the PDF will have a printable chart in it that'll look a lot nicer than this that you can use. And that's it for now. Let's get started with the cast one. The colors we are starting with, we are starting with the black. Let me get all these over to the side and out of the way. We are starting with the color leaf. And we are starting with night owl. So what I'm doing is I have both of those over to the side. I'm going to knot them together. Now for this project you want, get everything out of the way here. You don't want to start it at this end or this end. You want it kind of in the middle because we are double knitting and when you're double knitting it is a lot easier to um, do it in the middle of the loom because typically it's harder to do double knitting flat because your yarn's going to be getting tangled in the pegs as you are working it so I typically will actually hold it like between my legs um, like in between my knees to work on it so you want to find the middle part which I did I counted down 18 pegs 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 that's the peg I'm going to start on and then you count down it's 27 pegs wide so from here to here is where we're going to be working it and that gives you plenty of room on both edges edges to hold the loom to do the cast on, I actually went ahead and done one collar um, just so you don't have to sit through me doing it because it does take a couple minutes. But what I did was I knotted both my collars together, which we are starting with Leaf and Night Owl. And what I did is I had a little mark marking the pegs that I'm using just so that I'll know for my cast on. But what we're doing is I tied a knot and I just anchored this up here because I didn't need all, I didn't want to waste all the extra yarn of having it up here and wrapped around. So I just anchored it there. And all we're doing is just like a zigzag. We're getting every other peg all the way down. 
which I can hold it like this and make it go a lot faster. And there we go. And then I will just kind of hook that down there. These we will push down. And now we take our scrap yarn and you place it on both sides. Okay, get it go down in between there on this side and down in between on this side. I'm gonna make sure it's not wrapped around any pegs or anything. And then just so it doesn't come undone, I just tie it, just doing a little bow. And there you go. Now for our next row, we are actually going to start our chart. So we will do row one of the chart here. So you'll need your row counter. And I'm gonna take a moment to explain how to do this chart. Now for the chart, I prefer to have something to block off the rows below it. So take a couple paper clips and hook it to your paper you print out and then you can just easily move it down and all the rows are numbered so you can keep track with your row counter. But the you're gonna be switching collars for the different sides. I'll try to explain this and then I'll show it to you and hopefully it all makes sense. So for here, the chart's only 25 pegs wide. We are cast on 27. And why that is, is you'll have one row before and after that will stay one solid collar through your whole chart. That way you can easily know where you're at because you'll use that first and the last peg will be the same collar as your blank pegs, your blank squares. So how you read this is the numbers across the top correspond to your peg numbers. So one through 25 are one through 25 of the marked pegs. And then one through 12, well actually it's one through 11 are your rows. So let's kind of get started with this. Might be easier to explain as I work the row. So I'll have that blocked off. Oh, wrong way. Now, since this typically with charts like this, where you're going back and forth um, from one side to the next, you would start on this side for this row and opposite side, but this chart is exactly symmetrical. Uh, so it's completely symmetrical, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so, oops, accidentally undone. Make sure you don't undo your last row. There we go. Now with this project, you do slip the first stitches, which would be these ones right here. Um, now whichever way you start it doesn't matter. I am just going to cross them over one time. And well, actually look. Okay, so I've got a black stitch on this one and a green stitch on this one. So this side, all of the empty squares will be black and all the ones that are X'd will be the green. On this side, all the X'd ones will be black and all of the empty ones will be green. Basically how that works is we got our peg two, which is actually peg one on here. I'll fix that for the PDF. Um, that one is green. So then we need five that are black. Now what you do is you just twist it however many times you need to get to the right collar. For that we only need to twist once. But for the next one, if we twist once it'll be green. So we gotta twist it two times to be black again. And then you just, you can move it back and forth just to get it in the middle. Now one thing I do suggest is when you're twisting them, whichever way you twist it the first time for the first ones, twist it opposite for the second. That way you don't end up having to take and unwind um, your strands because they are just knotted together really bad. 
one, two, three, four, five. So then we have one green one. There's the X. And then we go back to the black and we will have five. And if they're not exactly even, see how that one, oh, sorry. This one comes out a little farther. If they're not exactly even, that's okay. Um, it won't make a huge difference. You just want to have it close. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll show you the change just one more time. Just over one time. And then for the next one, we just need it over one time. But now we got to have five in a row that this side's black and this side's the green. So we got one. And notice I am twisting it one way and then I will twist it the opposite for the next row just so they stay symmetrical. Well, not symmetrical, just so that the uh, yarn, I don't have to unwind it later. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five. Then I go back to the green finish out the row. When I get to the last pegs, I'll take those bottom loops over the top all the way down. And then I just keep following the chart until I am almost done with row 11. Then I'll show you how to join and change collars. The cast on is complete. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. At this point, you can go ahead and undo that knot and take your tool here. Just pull it down below. Just leave it down there. Now for, I'll go ahead and get started on the second row, row number two, which got row one done. Mark that. Uh, just get you started on row two. So hopefully if there's any confusion, kind of explain a little better, I hope. Okay, so we got row two marked. Now, we unhook our yarn. We will slip the first stitches, which means we are skipping those first pegs. See that? I, need, I probably should zoom in a little better. Okay, and for this row two, the first block will be the same collar. It's your background collar for that side. So this one we can see, the first peg is green. First peg is black. So we know that is our background collar. Um, now we don't wanna just take it like this and wrap it. You want to cross it, which we're doing the background collar. So we gotta cross it over two times and go around the pegs. And then we've got one peg of the foreground collar. Try to get that in the center. And then we have three pegs of the background collar. And we have three pegs of the foreground collar. And again, if you do this, it does go a lot easier if you are holding it um, at an angle or you know almost vertical. It'll make it a lot easier to work. Let's see. Got your, that is your, we'll call this peg zero, peg one. We have the background collar, peg two is black, it's the foreground collar we'll say. Then we have three of the background collar, three of the foreground collar, see there's the three, and here's the three, and that's kind of where I stopped at. But you just keep doing this all the way down to the end of the row. Work back and forth until you are almost done with row 11. Just make sure your first peg and your last peg remain 
the same color. They are not on the chart, at least not on this one. They will be on the PDF um, printable chart, but on mine, they're not on there. But this rem reminds you of what your empty blocks are for wherever you're at. Now it will remain the same through this entire chart for when we go to repeat the chart and change colors out, you'll be using a different color, but the concept is still the same. Almost done with row 11, it's time to change our collar. We are just changing the leaf to um, minty. So what I did was actually wrapped all the way down to the end of the row and then I marked it with a pencil where the join was going to be. Now to do this, we're actually using what's called a Russian join. You thread the yarn on the needle. Just need a little bit of the tail sticking out. The yarn that you are joining, you put over top like this. And we are going to take and you kind of untwist it and put the needle through the yarn. And you just kind of run it through the different plies, which are how many strands you have, which this looks like three ply, one, two, yeah, three different strands there. Just run that through. And you just keep kind of twisting them around the needle. Now this technique, it does have a little bit of a learning curve, so I do suggest if you've never used it before to practice it before you do it on this project, um, just to make sure you have it down. Because if you do it and you think you got it done and you pull it tight and it unravels, don't be upset, that happens and it's not the end of the world, you just redo it. But the farther down you put it, the better it's going to hold. So then what you do is you actually just pull the needle through and you pull that tail and you'll straighten it out and you'll cut off the little tail that's sticking up. You're going to do the same thing to this other side, which I will go ahead and work that with you. Oops. Get this threaded. Which, if you put the yarn over top and you kind of hold it really tight and pull it off, sometimes you can thread it like that. You just kind of push it through and pull it up. I just need a little tail again. And then, well, this one will do a little more. I've got kind of a weak spot in the yarn there. So you kind of untwist it and you catch those strands and they will twist around the needle. I know lots of times with like a four ply or even more, you can kind of untwist it and just run the needle down through um, a large part of it and you can do it a lot quicker. But just keep going. I'll say that's enough. And we'll pull it through. I see there's a loop here. So we kind of pull it up and pull that strand tight. And then you pull it down. And now I can't find my little snips, so we'll just use these. These scissors are horrible. Cut that string off there and cut this one off here. And that join is seamless. You just finish out your row and then we will go on from there. Now once this row is complete, what you're going to do is you're going to restart your chart up at row one because if you notice row 11 and row one are the exact same, same with two and 10, 
three and nine, four and eight, and five and seven. Those rows are all the exact same. So what you're gonna do is you are going to wrap this row, but you're gonna switch your collars. So the uh, leaf collar, you will wrap with the black, and in the black, you will wrap with the minty collar. And you'll do that and then finish out that chart. Then once the chart is done, you will do a Russian join, but this time you'll be switching out the black. In the black, you will switch for the collar girly, and you'll be running these two collars. And again, you'll switch them. So what was the minty will now be the girly collar and what was the black will be the minty. Hope that made sense. So basically, when you get to that point, it'll be black and minty on here. The black, you will wrap with the minty collar and the minty collar you'll wrap with the pink. You'll finish the chart out again. And then that, the next time you'll switch out the minty for the tree collar You'll finish that out and then you'll switch out the girly for the leaf collar finish that out and then you'll switch out the leaf collar for the black and you'll just keep doing this and keep following this chart switching those collars out following this pattern until you are almost out of yarn then I'll show you how to do your cast off okay so I wanted to show you me actually doing a row wrapped in it, showing you how I hold it between my legs. Um, that way you can kind of see exactly how I do it. Now, the last row I did was row seven, right here. So I am on row eight now. I'm gonna sit this over here and mark it so I can see what I'm doing. I just wanna show you how much faster it is holding it upright like this. So I've got three. And it's a lot easier, see, to keep the collars in the middle too. And one thing you will notice is you'll get to where after a while you kind of recognize the patterns that are uh, going on to where you don't have to just sit and stare at the chart the whole time which I'm kind of at that point now where I will see a pattern and I recognize it and I can just kind of keep going with it without being slowed down by checking the chart after each stitch. And when I get down to the bottom, angle it out a little more just to make it easier. And I hold it, click my row, then I will take the last stitch off each side. Now, if you want, you can actually take and double check the row. So it's row eight, so I have three, then one, one, three, one, one, five, and then one, one, three, one, one, four. So that's how you can check it. And even if you're not sure about the row before, this right here is row seven, this right here is row eight. So you can actually double check both rows before you knit them off, which you just, of course, bottom loops over the tops. All right, finish out your project until it is as long as you want. Um, I will be adding fringe to this one, so I'm not actually going to work out all the way to where there's no yarn left. I'm gonna leave enough to do fringe on both ends. All right, so I've made the scarf as long as I wanna make it. Now it is time to do the cast off. Now I spooled it and each one, I'm still left with a good bit of yarn. I could have actually went another set larger, but I think I'm actually going to keep the excess yarn and maybe make a matching hat or something to go with it. Okay, so to do the cast off. Well, one thing I want to show you first. When I got done with the chart, I did one row of how I did the cast on stitch. 
where you just went like this. I did where you hit every other peg with the collar and then went back with the opposite collar and got the other ones. I did one row of that and I went ahead and knitted them over just so that it was done. There are many, many ways you can cast this off. Um, let me zoom this in some. The way I'm going to show you is you take the stitch from this side, you move it over. And then we are just going to do a basic bind off at that point. Now one thing you got to watch is until you get all those over, see some of these are like kind of popping up, kind of tug those down, watch them. Uh, you don't want to drop any of the stitches. Just go all the way down. Almost. Okay. Now you can pull that and kind of secure it. And we want both the strands coming from the same side now. At this point, we are going to do what is called a basic bind off or cast off. We're running both strands together. We're going to wrap the first two pegs or last two however you want to look at it knit those off take that second peg move it back one knit it off and then move it forward now we will wrap both pegs now you're treating both loops as one loop pull it over so you want to make sure you keep a hold of both. Get that over and move it back. Each time, it's basically three steps. You e-wrap, oops. E-wrap two pegs, knit them off. You take the second peg Move to the first peg, knit it off, and then you move it over to fill in that gap. So you will be doing this until you get to the last peg. All right, we are at the last two. And I need to take the second one over to the first, knit it off. Now, all we need to do is actually just take your crochet hook, pull the ends through, tighten it up, and your cast off is done. Now you take your crochet hook and kind of weave the ends in and then cut them off. Now you want to finish up your cast on edge. You want to start at the opposite end of your cast on string and what you're going to be doing which it doesn't really matter which collar you have the two together take one over the second which I just go in a pattern um, I did I got the yellow on there so I'll pick up the black well it's like green I got the black so I'll pick up a green one You just pull that loop through. You're going to go all the way down. See what I'm doing? I'll show you a couple up close. I picked up the black, pull it through. See? I pick up the green, pull it through. Oh, sorry. 
back up. Make some black loop. Pull it through. This is why you want to use a contrasting collar because this string is separating that row out for me. And do this all the way down to the end. All right, I'm to the very last stitch. And now all I'm doing is pulling those two through and that's locked in. Now we can take this apart. Oh, I got a knot in it, don't I? Okay, there we go. And pull that out. Here is the cast on edge versus the cast off edge. They're not exact, but they're very, very similar. Um, what I'm actually going to do, you can leave this like this if you want. I am actually going to do some fringe. So I've already got my yarn cut. As you can see, I can zoom out here, I guess. I cut a bunch of each collar. And what I'm going to do is start all the way here at the end and just work my way down. I'm going to take two. I'm going to actually rotate through the collars. So the first one is two of, I don't have the names right here with me, whatever color this light green is. And what you do, just pull it through. And then you loop it and that locks it in. So now I take two of the black. Find, sorry about that. Find my next. See what I'm doing is there's the first hole. Pulling them in between the stitches. And there's the second one. And I'm doing the third. And I'm just gonna do this pattern over and over until I have fringe on both ends. I'll go ahead and finish the fringe out and then show you what it looks like when you're done with the fringe. You just cut it even at the bottom. I'm almost done. I just wanted to show you a tip to use with this end here. If you actually take and run the end along this cast on edge, you can completely hide any ends that will pop up with the fringe. So go ahead and finish out the fringe. And all right, so our like scarf is all done. There's still enough yarn to do a hat if you'd like. Uh, the scarf I made with the fringe ended up being about eight foot long. So it's a very large scarf. And here's how the fringe looks. Which of course, exact measurements and everything are in the PDF. This just gives you a rough idea of what it looks like. Um, that's really, that's all I have for you guys for this project. I really hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have specific questions, my email is in the video description. Um, you can email me if there's specific questions because sometimes questions do get lost uh, just dealing with YouTube. I get a lot of comments and questions, so it, it can be hard to keep up with them. But thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.